Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about DC shunt motor. This is our example number 6. In this example I will discuss a situation where we have a characteristic curve of motor and from there we will calculate the required values. So let's look at our problem. We have the DC shunt motor and it has the following characteristics. So the terminal voltage, again the feed resistance and also the armature resistance is given. In addition we have the magnetization curve for a motor speed and this in this case this is 3500 rpms so what you see in this characteristic curve is the following you have the field current here in the and the horizontal axis and in the y-axis you have the back emf so depending on your field current your back emf is given it is actually for a very long uh, region of this part is linear and then it becomes a part which is then not linear anymore so we will use this curve to calculate the required values and what are those we would like to calculate the armature current we would like to calculate the developed torque we would like to calculate also the required input power and also the efficiency of this shunt motor so let's look at our solutions then and of course we begin always with a model that will be helpful and this is our DC shunt motor model. The field part again, and also the armature part, and this is the terminal voltage where we apply our DC voltage. And it is in this case 400 volts. All right, so let's start with the first one, which is the armature current, and for that we actually look in this branch. So, armature current first. Now, we set up the Kirchhoff voltage law, we're looking from this node to that node. So the VT will be then across these three elements. So the armature resistance, inductance, and also the back EMF. So you can see that here. And again, since we have a DC system and this is a DC current, the reactance of this inductor of the armature will be zero. So it will be then gone in this third term on the right-hand side of this equation. That will simplify this expression and you will get this expression for your armature current. Now, if you substitute, of course, the values, you will get the armature current. But of course, the back EMF must be determined. That can be determined from this graph. Looking at the graph, you can see for specific field currents, also the associated back EMF value. For example, if you look at one amperes for our field current, you will see 150 volts for our back EMF. And that is then specific for this rotation speed. So it's actually then for this situation. But what is, what is our field current? So it's actually required. So this is not specifically in our case. So this is just an example. So let's also look at the field part, this part. Again, we can set up the Kirchhoff voltage law. This voltage, the terminal voltage, will be then applied across these two elements. Again, this inductor will be, the reactance of that inductor will be zero because it is DC that will go and you'll only have this so you can now calculate the specific field current for this situation and that's then the terminal voltage over that field resistance and that will be then 400 over 200 will be 2 amps so we don't have 1 amps but we do have 2 amps so what we do with this information what how can we use this now we know that this is of course a linear part of the system so then we have actually the following we can say the IA, which is actually here, specific for this case, will be then 400 minus 300 over 1.6. You might ask why, because this will now be doubled since this is a linear uh, curve. So if you increase this by two, by a factor of two, you will also increase it by a factor of two. That's actually what you see here. So you will get 62.5 amperes. You can also see that later on in, our, in this part of the uh, solutions. Okay, that's now for our armature current. Let's now look at the developed torque. Now, the developed torque is given by this expression again, related to our armature current and also our motor tone constant. We don't know the motor constant yet, but we can calculate it. We know that this is the valid equation also for the back emf using the motor constant also the rotation speed this is of course in radians per second so we need to uh, be careful about that and this rpm so we can say now since the curve is linear 
we have of course this already said that's actually 300 volts so this is 300 volts but we need to use this and also then this to calculate the developed torque so let's move to the next part now this is all the information again we have just uh, collected the field current the armature current and also the back emf and this is the given value here is again the model and also our curve so what we have is then the following situation the torque again is given by this expression so the developed torque is then the motor constant times the armature current this is also valid for our back emf now we see again the same expressions for our motor constant then we can say first we rewrite actually the given rotation speed of the motor in rpm convert that to radians per second using this expression then you will get 367 radians per second really close to that value so i can now use this in here so i can say okay what is now the motor constant that is just the back emf 300 volts over that 367 radians per second i will get 0 0.817 waivers now i can use this in here because i already have the armature current from question a so let's then substitute in here and I will have 51.1 Newton meters. And that's actually just substituting this expression. Okay, that's done for question B. Now moving on to question C, that's the required input power. So how much power do we uh, apply actually for this system? Now the input power is always the terminal voltage times the terminal current. So you apply a DC, voltage here and that will result in the DC current depending on the configuration here and the product of those two will be your input power so the terminal current again is the summation of the armature current and also the field current now we know both of them so we can say that's just 62.5 plus 2 that will give you 64.5 amperes so we know the terminal current if we all but they already given the terminal volt so we can just substitute the values 400 times 64.5 and you will get 25,800 watts that's actually our input power okay moving on to the efficiency efficiency is defined as the output power divided by the input power so how much power do we get by applying a voltage here and also the resulting current okay now we know that the output power is the developed power since that is actually what we really use ignoring of course a lot of friction uh, cases here so we only focus on the output power and the developed power developed power is equal to output power and that is then also equal to the back emf times the armature current so the back emf here times the current through it that is actual developed power because that will go to the mechanical part of this system so this we already know we have a 300 from the graph and also from the calculation and also the 62.5 from the calculation in question a now if you now calculate this you will get 18,750 watts that is now our developed power or the output power now i can use this expression substitute the value for the p out and also the p in and i will have this now what you get is then in and as a fact, as, as a scalar value, 0.727 or in percentages, very close to 73% or 72.7%. That's not the efficiency of this DC shunt motor, given the conditions of terminal voltage, etc. All right, this is our example number six. And this will conclude the situation where we also have a different situation of a DC shunt motor having a magnetization curve for the field current and also the back emf if you have any questions again please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible thanks again and see you next time in another video